January 9, 2022. Suddenly, North Korea's internet vanishes. Government websites blink offline without warning. Was it a retaliation for Kim's latest missile tests? Experts suspect a massive cyber attack, maybe by a rival government. But the truth, a single hacker in pajamas with a grudge. Why did he do it? And how far was he willing to go to make North Korea pay? One year earlier, an American cybersecurity researcher sits at his desk scrolling through code. He's known only by his handle, P4X. Late one night in January 2021, P4X receives a message from another researcher offering a new hacking tool. Curious, he opens the file in a secure virtual machine. Nothing obvious happens, but within a day, Google publishes a bombshell blog post. North Korean hackers are targeting Western security researchers with booby-trapped files. P4X checks the tool he was sent. The file hit a back door, a secret doorway for intruders. North Korean spies had tried to hack him. P4X is stunned. Why would a nation state go after him personally? He had narrowly avoided disaster by isolating the malware, but the attempt left him shaken. He soon learns he wasn't the only target. It was part of a broad campaign by North Korean operatives to steal hacking tools and vulnerability research from experts like him. Pyongyang's hackers were hunting the hunters. He expects the US government to swoop in. After all, being attacked by foreign cyber spies feels like an act of war on a private citizen. An FBI agent does reach out to P4X, but only to take his statement. There's no follow-up. No help securing his systems, no retaliation against the perpetrators. Weeks pass, then months. Silence. It's as if nobody's coming. P4X feels abandoned. There's really nobody on our side, he concludes bitterly. He's a hacker exposed to a nation's spies, and no one will protect him. That's when a seed of resentment takes root, planning revenge. North Korea struck at him in secret and got away with it. P4X isn't the forgiving type. As the months go by, that seed grows into a plan. If the authorities won't avenge this breach, maybe he will. The idea seems almost crazy, a one-man counterattack against the most isolated regime on Earth. But the more P4X thinks about it, the more it feels not just possible, but necessary. By the end of 2021, his mind is made up. He'll strike North Korea himself. Reconnaissance. P4X begins quietly gathering intelligence. For once, he's the hunter. His target, North Korea's sliver of the internet. Few outsiders truly know what North Korea's online infrastructure looks like. What P4X discovers amazes him. The country's internet presence is tiny and fragile. Only a few networks and dozens of websites serve the entire nation. It's a digital house of cards propped up by aging software and sloppy security. To a seasoned hacker, it's full of unlocked doors. Night after night, P4X scours North Korea's systems from afar. He probes servers, tests doors and windows in the code. Before long, he finds what he needs vulnerabilities, and plenty of them. In fact, they're not even new vulnerabilities. They're known flaws that North Korean sysadmins never bothered to patch. Old versions of Apache and other software rife with holes. An outdated Ninax web server bug that collapses the system if you simply send it a weird header. It's pretty interesting how easy it was to actually have some effect in there, he notes. The more he maps out their network, the more confidence he gains. He can do this, weaponizing the attack. He writes custom scripts to automate the attacks. If one man is going to strike an entire country, automation is key. His code will scan North Korean servers, find which ones are online, hit them with exploits to overload or crash them. 
It's a denial of service attack with surgical precision, like a digital guerrilla war. Every line of code is designed for one purpose, knock North Korea off the global internet. As he prepares, P4X operates in secrecy. He knows going vigilante is risky. If caught, he could face serious legal trouble under hacking laws. If North Korea figures out who's behind the intrusions, he could become a target. So P4X takes precautions. He adopts a pseudonym, P4X, pronounced P-A-X, a cheeky nod to enforcing peace through punishment. No real name, no face, just a faceless hacker delivering payback, launching the attack. By early 2022, the plan is ready. P4X sits at his computer, likely wearing that same uniform of t-shirt, pajama pants, and slippers. This ordinary-looking guy has a not-so-ordinary mission. He double-checks his tools. The code is loaded on his laptop and some rented cloud servers. The targets are lined up. His heart pounds with adrenaline and defiance. After a deep breath, he launches the attack. With a few keystrokes, the packets start flying. The code is running. The targets are set. Uh, crashing North Korea's internet. In a quiet Miami home, P4X's monitors flicker as streams of data flood out toward North Korea. At first, it feels anticlimactic, just code running, no explosions. He cues up an alien movie on the TV, munching on spicy corn chips, trying to act normal. But every few minutes, he pauses the movie and shuffles to his home office to check the attack's progress. Each time, the news gets better. One by one, North Korean servers stop responding. P4X pings the country's handful of websites. Aircorio's booking site, down. Nainara, regime's official web portal, down. The state news site, down. He refreshes again, nothing. One after another, the websites time out. Inside the secretive nation, officials suddenly find their external emails and web access cut off. North Korea has been knocked offline. Global confusion. P4X isn't celebrating yet. Is this real? Could one person truly have done this? He checks Pingdom, an independent monitoring service for website uptime. The charts for North Korea's web domains show a sea of red, outages everywhere. A veteran cybersecurity researcher monitoring North Korean traffic observes, a massive, mysterious wave of attacks taking entire networks down. He's baffled. He has no idea who's carrying them out. P4X grins. It's working, and nobody has a clue it's him. With each passing hour, the cyber onslaught continues. His scripts relentlessly bombard vulnerable servers until they crash, then move on. By the time he stops for the night, practically every website in North Korea is down. Before heading to bed, P4X takes a moment. It's a strange feeling of triumph mixed with disbelief. He has proven that even a fortress of a regime can bleed in cyberspace. Speculation begins. The next morning, news of North Korea's internet outage quietly spreads among analysts and intelligence communities. It's not every day an entire country goes offline. Speculation runs rampant. Did US Cyber Command act? Was it South Korea? A warning shot. No one knows. North Korea's government is predictably silent. Most citizens don't even know the internet is down. They never had access to it. The outages mostly affect propaganda websites, external facing services, email servers used for diplomacy and influence ops. On the streets of Pyongyang, life continues. But in intelligence circles, the mystery dominates discussion. The world wonders, P4X watches. Some sites briefly come back online, only to crash again. It's as if someone is toying with the regime's internet, flipping the switch off and on. No government claims responsibility, no hacker collective takes credit. Little does anyone suspect the person responsible is not a nation state, but a lone hacker at home. The Funk Project P4X watches the global guessing game quietly from behind his keyboard. 
he sees articles speculating on government ops and laughs to himself. For him, the confusion is part of the satisfaction. He doesn't want fame or credit. Not yet. Staying in the shadows keeps him safe. Still, he starts to think, what if I went further? If denial of service attacks got the regime's attention, what would data theft do? So, P4X sets up a covert site on the dark web, the Funk Project, short for FU North Korea. It's a rallying cry for other hackers. This is a project to keep North Korea honest. He's effectively recruiting. One hacker took the country offline. A handful could dig deeper. A vigilante cyber army. Not everyone supports him. Some worry his actions may interfere with intelligence operations. Others point out he's breaking the law. Under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, hacking is hacking, even against North Korea. But P4X doesn't care. He's angry. He feels justified. And he's not scared. My conscience is clear. He insists this isn't about regime change. He just wants to send a message. And he has. The legacy of P4X. So far, no law enforcement has knocked on his door. North Korea hasn't identified him. He remains unpunished, unidentified, unbowed. His fight continues in the shadows. What's next? North Korea doesn't know who's hitting them. Law enforcement hasn't come knocking. But how long can one hacker stay invisible in a war this dangerous? One man in pajamas brought an entire regime to its knees. But what happens when thousands of criminals don't just take down websites? They sell your identity like a product.